what's up everybody? Welcome to a very special edition of Drinks with Johnny. I am at a different bar. I'm here with my very special guest, Mr. Blasco. Never gonna stop me, never gonna stop. How you doing, man? Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate this is gonna it. be awesome. You wanna do a loaded Bloody Mary because it's uh, daytime. That would have dictated what we were doing. Yeah. Right? And we we're like, oh, we'll be over about like 11 a.m. And I go, that is morning. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> morning First, means Bloody Marys. Yes, it right? absolutely does. Yeah. First, we're gonna do the ice. Always make sure if you're gonna pull ice like this, you've washed your hands, which I have. I have. So we get some ice going here. And then we're gonna start off with jalapeno infused vodka. We're gonna do like a two ounce pour. Very messy two ounce pour. I'm gonna use Zing Zing as my Bloody Mary mix base, and then you can doctor it up any way you want after that. Here, we're gonna get some Worcester sauce. We're gonna just do a couple dashes of so just a little bit of that. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of A1 sauce. Put that in there. And we're gonna get a little bit of horseradish. Same, felt like that, just a good, good glob, good glob. You said loaded, I'm, I, I'm going loaded. Then we're gonna do a little lime juice on that. Just a little touch, you know, just kind of break up the acidity and you know, all that good stuff. And a few dashes of Tabasco. We are going to stir all that up. I just realized I forgot to do the rim. So there we go, we're gonna add bacon. You always need bacon in a good Bloody Mary. And then here's the, the big kahuna for you, my man. I have got my skewer with Cheese, a mini corn dog, chorizo, an olive, and a lime for you. That is insane. Yeah, that's the loaded Bloody Mary part right there. Now, what we're gonna do, since I missed this part, get it nice and ready. I've created my own concoction of celery salt and Cheez Its, and that's gonna be our rim. So you're just gonna roll it right around in there, get it nice and on there. Yeah, don't be shy. With don't be Cheez -Its. shy. Yeah, you gotta get in there. And you know what? Here's what we're gonna do to make this nice and easy on me. Yeah. And that even gives you another added uh, mix of it, you know? So and that's here we go. next level, making your own rim. Yeah. Because I haven't heard of that. Sometimes <laughs> they'll get crazy and do like a pepper mix. I had some cheese that's sitting there. I was like, let's crush them up and put them in there, you know? So here we go, man. Try it out, tell me what you think. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, it's my totally man. Totally amazing. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's got all the right flavors and not an overpowering kick. Yeah. Right. I, you want to be able to drink it. Sometimes yeah. you get ones that are a little too novelty. Yeah. Again, thank you for having me at your house. Of course. This is, a, this is an awesome up. change of pace. Very special edition of Thanks with Johnny. But uh, let's have our Bloody Marys moving on over to your couch, my man. Great. Cheers, brother. Cheers. All right, oh. man. Well, thank you again for inviting me into your lovely home. This is, of course. A, this is quite the treat. And I uh, forgot to mention at the bar, but you just christened the bar. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. appreciate that? that. So let's talk, let's get into it, my man. Um, last time I saw you, I think, was in Italy. Mm. We had a festival. You were playing with Ozzy and yep. uh, Avenge were, were, were both out there. And it was just outside of Florence, right? I think right. so. Was that? Was that? Yeah. yeah. I don't even remember what festival it was. <laughs> I one know. of those I know Italy was rocks there. hard festival. Yeah. It was well. It was one of the ones that like I I was in my memory because I I wanted to stick around and check you guys out. Right. Um. And we did and sitting there side stage and you just came up and said what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is it was cool because I was like you know you're in your moment you never know each uh, artist kind of has their own way of doing things on stage right yeah and, like some people are like want to be very focused on what they're doing. Other people like you, like me, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I, like, I'm having fun with people on the stage or in the crowd and everything like right. that. Right. So. Yeah, and yeah, it's because, you know, as you know, right, there's moments in the show as the bass player, right, mm -hmm. if there's a drum solo, guitar solo, fucking something going yeah. on, you can peace out for a minute. <laughs> and so, and all those festivals is great because there's always someone hanging out, like, on Absolutely. the side of the stage and, and, and always on, on my side. 
so I get lucky in that way. Let's talk about like your career as a bassist. So let's, I mean, I did some research. And I went back and I found like uh, apparently the first more professional stuff was like that thrash band from Santa Monica. Right. They had uh, was it? Slaughter. Cryptic Slaughter. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Go ahead. Is it filming? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay, Les. Okay. All right. This is Cryptic Slaughter, and we've been together now for like over a year, almost a year and a half. And uh, we're gonna play this hot party tonight. <laughs> You know, I play guitar, fun. Scott plays uh, drums, Bill sings. I sing, and uh, <laughs> Rob plays the penis. I mean, <laughs> that was a fun time. You know, it's one of those things like you don't realize how bitching your life is until it's it ain't bitching anymore. You know, <laughs> yeah. like you know, you don't, like, don't realize what you have until it's gone. Right. right. <laughs> like think of people that would fucking murder someone for this opportunity. Yeah. Fifteen years old with my bros in high school that are 15 years old. You know, you send in a demo tape to Metal Blade Records, and then a week later, a contract comes. That's amazing. And we just fucking, oh, 15 fuck. years old. Just sign the motherfucker here, send it right back to him. <laughs> Woo, we're signed. Whatever. That's incredible. Lawyers, managers, realize. fuck it. Just sign, sign yeah, no, it. whatever. Yeah, Who cares? It's a contract. <laughs> it's what we were trying to do. <laughs> right. From that point, like, moved to Hollywood and just Chase the dream, man. Yeah. So the next, I believe, was Drown, right? Was that, yeah. that come next? Yeah, yeah. So Drown was in the 90s in Hollywood when things, shit was happening. Production deals. There's and still a lot of money to be made from those labels at the time, you know? I mean, that was shit, shit time, time, man. Yeah. So they were just, and everyone's still coming off the high of the 80s. I mean, right. literally. Yeah. So it was like, <laughs> and it was still hot, though, you know? Yeah. MTV was still around. Um, the transition from vinyl into CDs was still hot. People, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it was just fucking commerce, yeah. crazy. And now, so the interesting part of all that is whenever we were managed by the same company, Drown opened a few shows for White Zombie. Okay. So that's when I met Rob. So that was the connection. That's, that was the connection. Okay, I'm, cool. oh, I'm putting together the solo band. Are you doing anything? Nope. What do you need? Yeah. Uh, you know, could you play in my band? Sure. Fuck yeah. Why not? Yeah. Fuck that sounds right. awesome. Yeah, yeah, so you're just doing, yeah, just doing that for a while. And then that was eight years. Yeah, that's cool. I think the expectations for that, not him, not his expectations, but I think the expectations from the sort of the, the, the people around him in the camp was kind of like, we're just going to let him do this solo thing, and then he's going to go back to White Zombie, so don't get too comfortable here. Yeah, and that they were, couldn't you be know, more wrong. <laughs> right, and then Rob's like, fuck that. Like, this thing is going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, and it was. This is right when he's really starting to produce movies too, right? So like He was right in the middle of that. Like yeah. so we had a couple year run and then we took a little time off for him to make his first movie. Howdy folks. You like blood, violence, freaks of nature? House of a thousand corpses. Yeah, I mean that's a passion that he's had for a long time and he needed to chase that down and clearly it you know, it wasn't More, a waste. Didn't, yeah, it didn't 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 suck. So that's kind of a similar trajectory of like just being in front of the right people at the right time. Yeah. Zombie, when I was in Zombie, we had done four tours with the Aussie camp, whether it was Aussie or Sabbath. Or Sabbath yeah. Um, even in, when I was in Prong, we did an Aussie tour. So, yeah, so I had been in front of that camp like five, six times. So it's, it's one of those things like, as you know, it's like, man, we're looking for a dude like, who do we look at? We look at the people that are the closest in, in our yeah. proximity. Yeah, that have That have a good reputation. Yeah. You know? And weren't dicks. Right. <laughs> that, you know? That's another lesson for you. If you're, if you're out there, just don't be a dick because you That's don't know who you're going to end up working with later. That's the biggest. And um, so, yeah, so I got a call and they were like, hey, you know, we'd love you to help us on this tour and, you know, we'll see what happens. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. That's, of course, yeah, all day long. What was your first impressions of their dynamic? I know you'd probably seen it from the outside, as you mentioned, with the camps kind of meshing over and mm -hmm. everything like that. But like when you were when you were officially coming over to be the bass player for Ozzy, what was that what was that first impression like? Yeah, I mean, it was like jumping out of a moving car. Yeah, you know, like trying to like chase a train. <laughs> sure. in yeah. motion. It's just, it's, just like, it's flying with or without you, you better right. catch on. You know, like when you think about it, you're like, heavy metal exists because of that dude. Yeah. Right? So I'm here because of that dude that played and wrote those songs <laughs> that I get to play. Yeah. And 
That's nuts. It's one thing playing in a band with the dude that you respect and you like his yeah. music or whatever, but like we're all here because right of, now because of what because was done. That and it's, it, dude, it, it, yeah. If the job was backing Bruce Springsteen, it's a different gig. Yeah, totally. You know, <laughs> playing the role of making sure that he looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Right, and how does he look awesome? Because his band looks fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, and he sounds great, and the set list is great, and all that shit. Production is fucking crushing. So cool. You know, so it's all the pieces that make it so that he's the best. Yeah. You know? and, and that's, and that's, that's a tremendous that's responsibility. Job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's gotta be crazy. So yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you have any predictions for what we might see coming up in 2020? Um, well, yeah, I mean, in in direct relationship to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Video content is gonna get more and more popular because it's more and more important and it's easier to do. YouTube isn't just to put up your music video. Yeah. Johnny is in Avenged Sevenfold, right? He's, you're in a fucking big band. This show lives on the Avenged Sevenfold YouTube channel. Exactly. Because yeah. it's external lateral content for the fans, and you've created your own brand within the brand because Event Sevenfold can't release music videos once yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah, it's just not do financially doable, no. right? You know, it just, and there's not enough time. There's not enough songs. Not, nope. No, but this is the exactly the kind of thing that needs to be happening. Band members creating a brand within the brand that is external content for the fans because it's just like if I'm an Event Sevenfold fan and you're not giving me anything, then I'm listening or following something else. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'd going ra somewhere else, yeah. I'd rather have them listening to us, watching us, doing something within it is yeah. what we do. You get to see more of us and hopefully, you know, you're enjoying it. That's and it's fun, idea. we're just hanging out yeah. and, it's, and it's a cool angle and you've got a logo on the pint glass and it's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like you're putting in, there is an effort, but it all, it all helps and yeah. it's all for the fans. So I think, one prediction, video content, stuff like this, people are gonna start to get sharper about, mm -hmm. mainly because they have to, but because it's, it can be done. Yeah. It's easier to get done. It's like, man, you could turn this thing into a five day a week show, yeah. right? You know what I Absolutely. mean? You could be the fucking Oprah of yeah. fucking Event Sevenfold. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a title. Here we go. And I also feel like, and you know, I said it here, on Drinks With Johnny, but the album is dead. Yeah. The album format is a goner. It's pretty evident. Uh, you know, if you're saying next year, that's... that's I'm not that's saying that the album is dead next year, but what I'm saying is people are going to start to present their content and music in different ways yes, other than absolutely. bundled into an album. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. I think that's really cool. I'm excited to see what... Other, I mean, I know that we personally are, are starting to think about that or have been thinking about yeah. that, rather. And, you know, there's a lot of cool ideas out there. There's a lot of these really cool tools out there that you can utilize and, yeah. and have really, really great experiences with your fans listening to music. Totally, because it's like the consumer just doesn't listen to music that way anymore. They don't put a no, CD in no. and, and absorb it all. They don't put on a record and fucking uh, and turn it over. Through, and like, you know? yeah. they, just, they just don't. Like they're making playlists, they're, they, they're tagging in on a song. They don't have the attention span. Not, and it's not the music's fault, right? Because it's like, if you look at what I can do on this, I can oh. listen to a podcast, I can play a video game, I can listen to music, I can do all this shit. It's like, what do I want to do it's right now? It's an entire entertainment center built into one right. fucking thing that's in my pocket all the right. time. That's, that's fighting for the attention yeah. of the fan, right? Absolutely. And the fact I'm a fan, like, okay, well, maybe I want to listen to a record, but maybe I want to play a video game. Yeah. Maybe I want to chat with my friends. Maybe I, totally. maybe I want to fucking make a movie, fucking whatever. Yeah. Like, I can do it all on here. So it's the struggle of the device Right? And, and, and just the content delivery system is that we're not fighting against, you know, we're, we're not fighting against the other music. We're fighting against all the content that's out yeah. there. And that's a lot to try and get someone's attention. Like, totally. yo, yo, I'm over <laughs> here. Pay attention to me. <laughs> like, you'd be stoked just if you could get them three and a half minutes totally. to listen to a song, let alone commit to a fucking record. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's, that's, I mean, you're absolutely, you're nailing it. That's, it's 100% the truth, yeah. that's why, you know. But in that reality, there's a lot of opportunity, I think. And that's like, and yes. it's gonna change. Because it's the wild, the wild art. west. Yeah. What you guys are gonna do versus what I'm gonna do versus what Rob is gonna do or Ozzy's gonna do, right, is totally different. Yeah. Because 
it's, it's the wild, it's, like I said, it's the wild west. Like you can make it's a record, un, you can put a single out, you can put an EP out, you can just, you could drop a song a month, you could drop a song, it's, it's like whatever it feels like is gonna work best. Yeah. It's like no one's what, gonna again, have to follow a pattern. And that goes back to the other prediction that brings, you, you're gonna want to have that direct connection to your fans. Yeah. I think it's gonna make it so much cooler for the fans because they don't even know it yet, but they're about to get these like one-on-one -on -one kind of feeling ideas coming at them and like right. really being a part of whatever community that they latch on to you know totally. and i think it's going to be a really cool thing. yeah and developing these types of things right because yeah. what if drinks with johnny debuts in a, the new avenge sevenfold track yeah. because you can <laughs> yeah if you whatever. wanted to yeah and that's where and that's where it's going to be you know and and if you're the kids you got to tune in if you yeah. want to hear it before it comes I mean, out that, yeah as you said it's 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 endless <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thanks for the chat. I just wanted to ask, uh, where else can the people at home find more Blasco? Uh, I'm pretty much uh, only on Instagram. Okay. So Blasco1313. All the news and information, yeah. everything Blasco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. So for more of this episode and this conversation, go check out drinkswithjohnny.com. Find the podcast anywhere you podcast for the full conversation. And uh, thanks again for having us. And cheers. Yeah, thanks. Very good. Mm. <laughs> I guess now it's time to eat all the shit inside of it. Well, I, know. I didn't but want to do that, be all crunching on the fucking mic. That corn, <laughs> that corn dog is going to be sad. <laughs>